The Kremser method is a nice way of numerically evaluating uh, systems in which we are working with dilute systems and uh, dilute strippers or absorbers. And the to go over the definitions, uh, an absorber is anything that moves an absorbate, typically called A, from a vapor to a liquid phase. And a stripper is just the inverse of that. It moves an absorbate from the liquid to the vapor phase. And uh, for this example, I will be uh, using, or yeah, I'll assume we are working with an absorber. And the possible unknowns that we work with when talking about absorbers are the minimum solvent flow rate. And when working with uh, absorbers, it will be the liquid phase, um, as well as the fraction not absorbed a variable we define as phi. And, and phi will be equivalent to x in over x out. So x denotes the molar ratio of the inlet solvent. Uh, so x in and then x out is uh, the molar ratio of the absorbate exiting our absorber. And then uh, another variable we will typically have is called uh, little n, and that tells us the number of trays that will be required. And so as with many chemical engineering problems, the main issue or challenge is figuring out when is it appropriate to apply this model to a system that we are examining. And the Kremser method, to spell it out, is only valid when two conditions are met. The first condition is that we are working with dilute systems. And this is uh, important because it allows us, if our system is dilute to define something called an absorbing factor and equate that to L min or L the uh, liquid solvent flow rate divided by the vapor phase flow rate times the equilibrium constant between the liquid and the vapor phases of our absorbate and if our system is dilute we can uh, say that this is a constant for all of our trays in our system. And this helps us make a very uh, concise equation that allows us to relate many of these variables uh, to each other. And so to illustrate what's going on here, uh, I will draw out how we typically represent absorbers. And uh, what we'll note is that we have trays. So absorber is a composition or a collection of trays and uh, a final tray. And the way we number them is like this. So we'll have stage one, stage two, all the way up to stage or tray N. And the way we define our uh, flow rates is like this. So we'll have a total liquid molar flow rate denoted L sub zero. And the way this numbering system works is it will be L, so liquid molar flow rate, coming from whatever stage it's coming from. And so in this case, it will be uh, L sub zero because um, it's like it's coming from the zeroth stage. And uh, this will have a molar composition of our absorbate of X in. And so X in must equal zero for the Kremser method to be applied. And then leaving tray one, we will have uh, a composition of X1 and a uh, liquid molar flow rate L1. And so L1 must equal L0 uh, for our Kremser method to be able to be applied. And then examining the vapor phase side of stuff, what we have is exiting our top tray, a total vapor molar flow rate of V1 with a molar composition y out so the uh, molar ratio of your absorbate and your vapor phase exiting our absorber column and uh, the tray right before that will have a composition v2 uh, and uh, y2 and so the thing to note here is that with uh, the kremser method or um, with any uh, equilibrium relationship we know that y out must be in equilibrium with 
x1. So the streams that are exiting a tray must be at equilibrium, and that is to say that y out is equal to k, some equilibrium constant, times x2. I'm sorry, x1. So that is a key relationship to understand when working with uh, absorption and uh, to examine what's happening in the bottom tray of our absorber column, we will have uh, the liquid exiting L sub n, and that will have a composition of x out. And entering our absorption column, we will have a vapor molar flow rate of V sub n minus one, because it's originating from the n minus one tray, as well as a composition y sub n minus 1, which is equivalent to y in. And so the thing to note with absorbers is that we are, because we're moving our absorbate from the vapor to the liquid phase, x out will be more concentrated, will have a higher molar ratio of your absorbate than x in, and the opposite can be said of the vapor uh, concentration, so y out will have a lower concentration than y in. And so the, the reason the Kremser method uh, is able to be applied is because we were able to say that L0 was um, equal to Ln. We can let that equal some constant L. Uh, and then we can also say that uh, the same can be said for the vapor flow rate. So V1 would be equal to V sorry, Vn minus one, which we can just let that be equal to V. And now what we can do is define uh, an absorption factor, I will call it Ai, and that will be equivalent to L over V times K. And this is equal to a constant value. And the reason we can say it's constant is because we've already uh, noted that L and V are constants. Um, because we work in a dilute regime, um, typically equilibrium curves at higher concentrations will look like this. But if you note how initially we can approximate this uh, nonlinear uh, function as linear, if we're working in dilute areas, we can say that if we zoom in here, it's uh, linear, or it's approximately linear enough that we can apply these kinds of math equations to these models. And uh, just to clarify, so in this regime, when we have the linear slope uh, initially, um, what this allows us to do is also let k equal a constant value. At uh, low concentrations dilute. Okay, and so to get to the um, main point here, <laughs> the Kremser equation uh, tells us that the fraction not absorbed, phi, is equal to a minus 1 divided by a to the n plus 1 minus 1. So this is the main takeaway from uh, the Kremser equation, and uh, n is the number of trays, and a is the absorption factor. I'm sorry, I should write a sub i here. a sub i, and uh, the things to note about this is how um, we see trends occurring uh, when we let variables uh, reach or approach infinity. So as n goes to infinity, so as you increase the number of trays, we expect to get better um, absorption. Uh, we would expect our fraction not absorbed to approach zero, and that's what we see here. So as we let n approach zero, our denominator gets very large, and phi, the fraction not absorbed, goes to zero. And as um, a sub i goes to infinity, so as we increase our absorption factor, as we increase the, so A is proportional to our um, solvent flow rate for an absorber, uh, which is L. So as we flow more and more solvent through our system, 
the um, A will become uh, dominant, and as a result of that, uh, we would be absorbing uh, almost everything. So as we see, as these two terms approach infinity, um, our fraction not absorbed phi will approach zero. And this should make intuitive sense. Uh, so as we are increasing the number of trays, if we had an infinite number of trays, we would expect to absorb everything, as well as if we had, let's say, one tray, and we increased the solvent flow rate to infinity, we would also expect to uh, extract everything. And the reason um, we can let a sub i go to zero, or I'm sorry, infinity, um, is because in the denominator, a sub i will always be a higher power than um, the numerator. And so that's the reason why phi will still approach zero. And so I hope you guys find this useful. Let me know if you have any questions, and thanks for watching.